Amen. Praise God. We give God the honor and the glory. We thank God for his grace and mercy upon our lives. Hi, welcome back to Prophetic Utterance. It's your, it's your host, Jacqueline King. I mean, it is now 1239 in the morning, and I just wanted to bring forth the word of God. Uh, speak life uh, over every circumstance and situations that is occurring with us. Amen. Or whatever it is that you need prayer for, it's good to pray. I love to pray. Prayer is my connection to the Father. If it wasn't for prayer, it's not telling where I would be in this God's life. Amen. And that, that should be the same for all of us. If it wasn't for prayer, where would we be? If it wasn't for the righteousness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where would we be? And that's one of the things we need to acknowledge in our lives. Like, where would I be? If I had not accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, where would my family be? If I had not accepted Christ Jesus as my Savior, amen? So it's good to examine yourself, examine your heart. You know, I I don't want to neglect my position with God in the late hours of praying. Um, so I said, you know, I want to pray. At certain times of the day. But my favorite hour to pray is right now. The midnight hour. I love to pray between 12 and 3 in the morning. And sometimes I'm real tired. So my body say get some rest. And then when I get my strength back. I come back. And I'm on it again. Commanding the midnight hour. Amen. Praying. Interceding. For God's people. For you. Yeah you. The one that's sitting there listening to me. You know, I rather radio over a video any day because the radio is more intimate than watching someone. Amen. <laughs> Depends on who you're watching. Praise God. So we're going to do some prayer points again for our children. But I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to share a testimony. And after I share the testimony, then I'm going to pray. And um, I did this teaching before and it's about women who wants children. But they are miscarrying. Amen. So we will be back in Jesus' name. And I'm your host, Jacqueline King, Prophetic Utterance. Amen. Praise God. Welcome back. It's a pleasure to be back again with the word miscarrying your destinies. Amen. That's right. <laughs> that title just came to me, miscarrying your destinies. And this message is not just for women, but it could be for men too. Um, let's see now. So many years ago, I had did a teaching uh, Back in 2000, somebody, <laughs> I did a teaching and the teaching was about, you know, women who wanted to have babies, but they miscarried their babies. They kept having these miscarriages. Well, guess what? I was one of those women who miscarried uh, babies. I mean, um, it seems like the enemy was always attacking the fruit of my womb. And so I really like pursue God about this circumstance. I wasn't really maturely or spiritually strong in the word of God, but I knew I had to pursue God concerning the fruit of my womb. Amen. And uh I yeah, I recall I had uh went home to London and there was a lot of other women in the same situation that was miscarrying their destinies. I meant the fruit of their womb. And God has done some marvelous things. Some women have came back with testimonies saying they have had their babies. Amen. And some women has came back and said they're barrenness. They're still barren. Amen. So it's it's a battle. I have to admit there was years 
where I could not have a baby. And so my children of ages are very spread out. I, I, every one of my kids is six years apart because it took within those six years to have another baby. I wanted to have my children two years apart so they could grow to grow up together. But it, it never happened because the enemy was always attacking my womb. And so I recall I did this teaching about Hannah. And Hannah, uh, let's see now, Hannah, went, was her womb was under attack and she wasn't having children. And her husband's first wife was having children. You know, it's the same thing that was similar to um, Rachel and Jacob. You know, the womb was under attack. So... When I had my last miscarriage, I cried like a baby. I mean, I literally cried like a, when I had my first, I can't remember how, how many miscarriages I had. But when I did have that miscarriage, I went into depression. And I read the book of First Samuel chapter 1 about Hannah. And while I was reading the book, I was crying. I was very emotionally upset because I wanted my baby. And any woman or any man or married couple will understand where I'm coming from, especially when you're married and you want children. Amen. And it's, it's, it's something about being married and having children. It's honorable before the eyes of God because you're obeying your obedience is unto the father and you want to do what is just and pleasing before our, our father. Amen. So when sharing this message uh, years ago, um, uh, the battle was keeping my baby. And I recall the doctor told me that, oh, you could get pregnant, but this is how long you could carry the baby. And a lot of time, doctors or people just in life in general can cause us to miscarriage our destinies so we have to be careful who we align up and who we agree with and I immediately fell out of agreement with this particular doctor and mind you this was a very good doctor and um, every time I would get pregnant the first thing they want to do they want to do an ultrasound they want to check me they want to make sure the ba you know the baby's position right and um like I said, I just went to the book of Samuel. I just had, enough was enough, right? <laughs> I enough was enough. So I read about Hannah and uh, cried like Hannah did and poured my heart out like Hannah poured her heart out. I think I was 24 years old at the time, married, and I wanted a baby. <laughs> And I, I recall I just cried out to God and I would lay hands on my stomach. Um, didn't know at the time what I was doing was a prophetic act, by the way. And I would cry out to God and ask God to open my womb and to break the spirit of barrenness off my life. And the point of this message is that it's good to hear people like me to share our testimonies. But you're going to have to have a, a testimony. You're going to have to fight for your testimony. I don't know what situation any of you guys are in right now. But when the battle gets hot, you have to get hot too. I mean, like serious prayers, you know, not prayers of anxiety, prayers of anxiousness, but prayers that is filled with with the spirit of God to the point when the prophet sees you, he thinks you're drunk with wine. When you're not drunk, you're filled with the spirit of God and you're speaking in the spirit because you because you want to break that spirit of barrenness off your life. Because when your womb is shut up, it affects everything else in your life. Amen. And so uh, when I finally, you know, I kept anointing my stomach, kept anointing my stomach and kept crying out to God and every month you know no baby and then what I did I will say 
I'm going to have this baby. I'm going to be pregnant this year. And I, I, I did that. You know, I took authority over that, not realizing the power that I had at the time, because I was a real young Christian. And I mean, young, I was not, I was just a year, one year old in the faith. And, um, I just started telling people I'm pregnant. I would drink milk. I would eat like a pregnant woman. And everybody said, Jackie, you're, you're not pregnant yet. I said, I am pregnant. You know, I started changing my attitude to where I wanted to be. It's more or less like it's, uh, if you're in a, if you have a spirit of poverty of your life, on your life, it's one thing to pray. I break, I bind the spirit of poverty, but. You got to start walking in the spirit of prosperity in order to activate. It's the activation of your faith. Your faith is dead because you're not working with your faith. You're not allowing your faith to move you to your next. Amen. That's what my apostle Ivory Hopkins be saying. It's time for you to move to your next. But before you can get to your next, there's some things that you have to do, that we have to do. And that next the enemy will fight you before he will let, allow you to cross over. Just like with the children of Israel. He was, Pharaoh was pursuing the children of Israel. Not because he wanted them back. He wanted his possessions back. You know, when the enemy steals, he has to render back sevenfold of what he has stolen. And, and Pharaoh had robbed the children of Israel. Because you got to remember, when the children of Israel came to Egypt, they was not broke, busted, and disgusted. There was no illness or nothing. These people were covenant-keeping people. I mean, those are God's children. I mean, so the enemy robbed the children of God and made them slaves. And so when you don't live upright or you don't live righteously before God, that's what the enemy does. He comes in and he robs, you know, he kills, he steals and he destroys and he repossess our possessions. And now it's our time to go and get our possessions and leave out of it, out of the, the Egypt and get away from Pharaoh. And so Pharaoh was pursuing him hot. He was hot on their heels, but God will protect them. Protect them at night by fire and cloud by day. You got to realize who you serve, who you are worshiping. You really cannot have this ideology. He's a God sitting up in heaven, sitting in his chair, and he's answering prayers. He is also not answering prayers. Adonai is judging us. Amen. He's there. He's watching. He sees all things. He's everywhere. So (laughs) to say to you, woman who is blocked up who's barren in her womb speak life to your womb to say to you man of god lay hands on your wife's womb and pray i have women around me every day who walks in some form of barrenness but are not in a power of agreement with their husbands amen no matter what i went through with my um children's father I always knew if I needed something done or he knew if he needed something done, there has to be a power of agreement where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And whatsoever you ask in my father's in my, in my, ask my father in my name, it shall be done for you. Amen. So you have to speak to that womb. You have to speak life to that womb. You have to activate the promises of God with your faith. Yeah, you have to act like you are who the word of God says you are until you are transformed with the word of God. Amen. So I did have that child. I had that baby boy and we named him Matthew and Matthew means God's gift. And I'm telling you, ever since I had Matthew, the enemy is still on hot with that kid's destiny. But a guy promised me. That Matthew will be a man of God. Because you know what? I dedicated all my children to God. When I got pregnant, I immediately put my kids on the altar. So the enemy is requiring my children. So he has to go before God. He has to get in line with the sons of God. And he has to get permission. Understand me. Just like with Job, he had to get permission. Anything he wanted to do to God's children, he would come as an accuser. Because that's what he is, an accuser. So you must shut the mouth of the accuser in your life today. Shut the mouth 
of the line today that is attacking your destinies. Amen. You have to come by fire by force in the mighty name of Jesus. I have taught so many levels of prayer on this um, radio, this podcast, so that you can get your deliverance. I know what deliverance is. I have been through deliverance and I had to maintain my deliverance. Deliverance is good, you know. Jesus said, is that what goes in a man that defiles him? It's what comes out of the man that defiles him. So there's a lot of junk in us that is defiling us. And we must be seated in the heavens with God. Seated in his power, amen, including our children. And that's why when you listen to the prayer points that I'm praying about our children, because they need prayer too, just as well as mommy and daddy needs prayer, or auntie or grandma or uncle, whoever. Everybody needs prayer. The prayers of the righteous are valid much. Amen. So we just thank God for this teaching. We thank God for his grace because God is merciful. Amen. God is merciful. So we must not allow ourselves to be disqualified because of the cares of this world. Don't allow yourself to be disqualified in Jesus name. Amen. And I just want to read this to you real quick. And let me use a prayer point if I could find it. Amen. And then um, I want to read um, a quick word concerning our children seated in the heavens. Amen. Our children shall walk upright and they shall overcome Satan by the word of their testimony, by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus Christ. Because that's what it's about. Our children seated in the heavenlies with the Father. Amen. No longer bound on earth, but free to serve the living God. Amen. No longer blocked and bound. And you hear me say that a lot. A lot. No longer blocked and bound. You know, because you see people, they get, you know, they're on their way somewhere. And there's a blockade. Think about it. There's a blockade. It says no trespassing. You can't come through. And it keeps you bound. That's the enemy. He's a liar, you know. He's a deceiver. He make it, he make it look like that's God saying, oh, you can't cross over. Oh, you can't come. No, God will open the Red Sea for you just like he did his children. Father has no respect to a person. What he does for one, he do for the other. Amen. Satan, ah, he will limit you. He will prevent you. He will stagnate you. He will shut you down. If you're not praying, amen. So (laughs) I just wanted to share that with you. I just want to say these things to you because your children should walk in the presence of God. And you should pray these prayers with your children. Pray with your kids. Say, come, pray. I used to get my boys, all four of my boys, and we would go in the room. And then we would start worshiping. And I would start saying, victory is mine. Victory and, and and my boys would say, Victory is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Yeah. And then uh Matthew would say, Joy is mine. Come on now. Joy is mine. Joy is mine today. And I'd be clapping my hands. I told Satan. Get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. So you have to teach your children how to worship. You have to teach your children to sit down and hear you read the word of God. And you know what? They're not too old for it. They're not too old for it. You you let do it while they are young, while they're babies, and when they get old, keep doing it. And read Proverbs 22 verse 6. Because when they are young, you teach them the way of the Lord. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. Because the children knows their foundation. And the enemy wants to come and pollute our children's foundation. Amen. That's why we pray for them and keep them covered in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. So I want to read this to you. A man whose eyes are far from iniquity does not tell lies. That is why we need to cry and ask God, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? 
The word tabernacle, as well as the words holy hill, represent the seat of power of the Almighty. The Lord tells us the qualif- qualification of those who can arise to that holy place. One, walk uprightly means you just be a man or a woman of integrity. Two, do not take up reproach against your neighbor. Three, do not admire evil people. Four, honor them that fear the Lord. Five, be a man of your words, even if you swear to your own heart. Change not. Six, do not exploit people. Seven, do not take reward against innocent people. Amen? Praise God. Many of us think that all things can be solved only by prayer, but this is not so. You need to sit down, think, and recognize your life. And those, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Revelations chapter 9 verse 6. That's the hardship that man is going to go through. And he's going to wish he was dead and death will not be around for him to even look for death. Amen. Praise God. But it's important to examine our lives. Amen. To crucify our flesh and so much more. And I hope this message is going to encourage you. I hope this message is going to inspire you. You know, I'm not preaching with a lot of aggression. It's just something simple to help you woman of God to help the man you know when 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 the enemy was attacking my womb when I was pregnant I would have almost oh my lord Jesus I would have so much pain in my body and I asked my children's father he would lay his hands on on my stomach on my womb and he would begin to pray over me uh, to shut down the spirit of miscarriage you know, off my life. He had to come in agreement with me. I couldn't just do it by myself. God opened up my womb. God planted Matthew in my womb. Amen. And the enemy was still attacking my womb while I was carrying Matthew. And then uh, when I got to the fifth month, I was like, yay. When I got to the sixth month, yes. I was like every month and every day, every hour, every minute, I was counting. I was literally counting. I said, I'm going to have this baby. I'm going to have this baby. I'm going to have this baby. I had so much testimonies concerning carrying my babies, carrying my destinies. You have to understand, I raised my sons up to take care of me. So I always tell my sons, when I get old, where I cannot take care of myself, it will be your turn to take care of me. I don't just raise children up and say, you're going to college, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. No, no. You're going to be raised up knowing God for you, for yourself and you're going to learn to live upright before God. But when as I age, it's going to be your turn to take care of mama. Okay? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. So, Lord, I speak to the womb. I speak to the women right now. The ones whose womb is shut up. I speak life to that womb right now. I bind the spirit of frustration and anxiety off their lives right now in the name of Jesus. And I loosen the spirit of peace, the peace of that passive, all understanding. I loosen the spirit of peace, sound mind and love, self-control in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you did not give us a spirit of anxiousness, no father. The book of Philippians says, he did not give us that. Well, but we are to think of these things. To think of things that is true, honest, and lovely. There's so much we could plant our mind on, Father God, because you guard our hearts and our mind from the terror of the enemy. So, Father, I speak to that woman right now that she will submit and press and push in to your presence until her womb is open. And the enemy can never shut it up again in Jesus' name. Amen. May God be your portion. 
May he be your help. May he be your peace. May he be your joy. Amen. As you continue to seek God's will for your life. As you continue to pray over the children that you do have. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Affirming and proclaiming the blood of Jesus over your womb. Over the seed that you have now. God will bless you. I was told you will not have no children. You will be always miscarrying. I had to break that curse off my life. I had to fall out of agreement with that doctor. And the doctor who said I couldn't have no more children. Turned around could not deliver my children. Amen. So we just thank God. We just thank God. Thank him. Give God praise. Bless his holy name. Because victory shall be your portion. Double, double, double portion of victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So listen to the message. Play it over. This message is for everybody. Because the enemy will cause our men to have miscarriages in their lives too. Amen. So we just pray for the men of God to be strong and to be men of honor to be men that gives God praise no matter what you're going through you're still the head of your household hey in Jesus name praise God and I'm your host Jacqueline King prophetic utterance